Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, the video this morning is inspired by Dr. David Makarath, and he's been posting, or the guy that owns the channel, Christian Sermons and Audiobooks, has been posting his sermons. Um, he's actually a wonderful individual. I've had email communication with him um, just recently. He's in the UK, and he street preaches, and he does videos preaching. He goes and travels to different places and preaches. Um, and the video that he did today, which I'll link in the description, talk, is talking about fellowship. And the things he said in there are in the thing I agree with. That we need fellowship. Me and Jesse, Time of Justification, were talking yesterday about the same thing. <coughs> He's, you know, you get lonely, and you're, you get distracted easily. And he was talking about playing Minecraft. I play Minecraft to take my mind off pain and to take my mind off different things. Um, it's, it's legitimately a waste of time. But sometimes you need to balance everything out in order to be able to function better. It's a great way to decompress. But those things like that can't be your focus. The Lord must be your focus. So a lot of times when I am doing that, when I'm having a problem like yesterday, I could barely move. Uh, today, it doesn't feel like it's going to be much different because we had a storm come through and it's still going through, so the barometer is going nuts. Um, I'll plug in my earbuds to my phone and listen to um, preachers and listen to podcasts and listen to sermons and listen to studies in the scripture. So... My whole mind isn't taken away by playing that video game. And a lot of people have an issue with that video game and other things. There's nothing wrong with doing any of that stuff. As long as you don't make that your focus every day. We, we have the, this is the, we have freedom in Christ to do these things. All things are lawful, but not all things are excellent. However, we can take some of these things and turn them into opportunities. Not excuses, but opportunities. And so what I do is when I have my downtime like that, I listen to sermons. And there's times right in the middle of, the day I'll get an inspiration for a video and shut everything off and go do the video. So it, 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 it can be a good thing, but you have to keep your mind focused on the Lord. We also talked about fellowship because fellowship is more important. And, and Jesse made that declaration and I agree with him. Fellowship is more important. It would be better if we could come together. Look at what the churches are doing now. You go there and it's like, okay, great, I have fellowship. There's a click, there's a click, there's a click. There's the gossip people, there's this. And it's like, I don't fit in here. None of these people are fellowshipping like true brothers and sisters. Because everybody in there should be on the same level. Even the pastor. The pastor should not be above everyone in there. The pastor's the leader, but he's right there on the same level with everyone else. And yet, what do we see happen? Pastors elevating themselves. It's unfortunate and it's discouraging <clears throat> because those those kinds of things drive people away. If I had a big enough building, I would do my own Bible study. I put a sign out front, hey, anybody who wants to come in and have a Bible study, come in. If there was a way we could all work together and come up with a, a central meeting place. And like what he said, he goes, he goes, it would be great if churches were open seven days a week. I agree. I think that would be awesome. Not all day, every day, but, you know, a few hours. A few hours in the evening. Uh, that way, people could come and could get refreshed, especially with the time that we're living in now. Especially with what's going on now. That we can have that fellowship and that encouragement and get refreshed and get ready to go. To come in and get prayer over a situation. You could come in and you could ask somebody to pray for you and sit down and pray with them. You can confess to them. We are each other's counselors. And the scripture fully supports this. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Hebrews 10.25 Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, we're in a situation now where we're not forsaking meeting together, it's hard to meet together because it's hard to find a place where you can meet real brethren. I can go to a church and not get fellowship. 
unless I belong to a group. But then the whole group is doing something I'm not supposed to do. That's not fellowship. I don't want to go somewhere and watch all these groups of people form and have all of them doing the exactly the opposite of what the Bible says. I'm not getting fellowship with brethren because they're not my brethren. They're not focused on God. They're focused on everything but God. This is what I mean when how, how not all Christians are saved. They think they are. I was going to church with one guy. Great guy made him got along incredible. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Would get along great. Super nice guy. Love being around him and working with him. By his admission, he says he does not want to be saved and is not interested in receiving the Holy Spirit. Yet he was in church every Sunday. He's not a Christian. What was funny was I had better fellowship with him, with him an admitted non-Christian and admitted not wanting to be a Christian than I did with the Christians. It's, it's weird. So we're not forsaking. I'm not forsaking fellowship. I'm just looking for real believers to have fellowship with. And it's hard to find. We're so spread out. Now, again, back then, when this was written, it was a different time and things different things were happening. Now is a different time and different things are happening. And the Lord knew this was going to happen. That's why he allows us to be able to do a lot of the things that we do, like being on YouTube and other places. Um, I'm currently trying to figure out another place that I can go where I'll be able to work stuff. It might be parlor. I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to find one that's going to be as viable as possible. Brightian is okay, but I can't interact as good on Brightian with you guys. <clears throat> so I'm trying to find one that I can interact with everybody with uh, as easy. Or even easier if it's possible. So that may be something that happens in the future. I'm not trying to get as, as back into a bunch of social media if I can help it. But with the way things are going here, it may be a, something that has to happen, especially with what's going on. And that may be something that will help Jesse too. Oh, and in the future, we do have a, another live stream planned. We don't know exactly when we're going to do it yet, but it's coming. And we got some subjects we're going to talk about. One of those live streams is going to be specifically on 1 John. So Hebrews 10.25, we're not forsaking the fellowship. We can't. If I lived close enough to Jesse to be able to drive to his place within an hour or two, we could meet up and we would do a live stream together. Of course, he would sit up behind the camera so nobody could see him. But in fact, we may not just know either one of our face. But it, you guys understand what I'm talking about. We're looking for real believers to fellowship with. Some of y'all are here in Texas, but it's not it's not feasible for us to meet. If there was a way to do it, I know a lot of people would come. Because it's one of those things, we've all been kind of hurt by this system. We've all been kind of, been made gun shy or, you know, we're a little leery of, you know, meeting up. But if something was established where genuine fellowship could come. And when dissension came or when somebody came in who wasn't a true believer, they were, hey, you got to go. You can't be here. This is not for this. This is a different thing. This is for us coming together and helping each other <clears throat> and deal with it and make a, a safe space, basically, for real believers to come in. And we could have that good fellowship and it would be an encouragement. It would help each other. And we could come together and help each person with their individual issues. And that's what the Bible supports us doing. 1 John 1 3, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father. And with his son, Jesus Christ. And this is a different kind of fellowship. This is a spiritual fellowship, which we all have right now. Now, the next set of scriptures, and these are really interesting because these have been misunderstood by a lot. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A three cord, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. What he's talking about here isn't what people make it out to be. There's a lot of people out there that make it out to, there's some loose homosexual connotations in this. That is not what he's talking about. He's talking about one person by themselves operates in one way and they struggle. How many can relate to that? My hand is up. I know if Jesse's listening, his hand is up. 
but two together support each other. Now, this also leads into marriage, too. You can talk about how it leads to it. Two are better because where one lacks, the other excels. And where that one lacks, the other one excels. So they the, the parts that I'm missing, another person will have. Me and my wife were talking about this last night. The parts that I'm missing, she fills. The parts that she's missing, I fill. Together, we become a great team. That's how it's supposed to be in the Christian fellowship. And you you have two together, it's hard to fight against them. It's hard to, to beat them down. Now, if a person is alone, you're never alone. First of all, we're all your brethren in the spirit, and we're there with you. We're all sharing these, these things. There's not a person that I talk to that, that isn't experiencing what we're all experiencing. But the, the Lord is there with you, too. You're not alone. The Lord is there with you, too. He's the other one helping you. But if there's three or more, forget it. You want to see things change? Man, three or more together in the name of the Lord? Unstoppable. But that's what the fellowship does. And the more people that are there, the more strengthened everybody is. Everybody can come together to help another with their problems. So nobody lacks. And that's what the whole goal of all that was. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. My last church had iron sharpens iron meetings. I liked the meetings. <coughs> but a lot of people that were doing them had misunderstandings on what iron sharpens iron was. It was them dictating to others or preaching to others. Well, this is a Sunday. This is a sermon. We're supposed to be coming together and talking and interacting about this. But some of them just, they, they, they wanted to be the ones to talk and nobody else could talk. That's not what iron sharpens iron is. We're supposed to come together to help each other. I made some suggestions and they were poo-pooed on pretty quick, but whatever. 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, the son, cleanses us from all sin. Matthew 18, 24, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I, am I among them. If two of us come together in the name of the Lord for fellowship, the Lord is with us. He stands there with us. You get 50 together in the name of the Lord under a common cause. Good luck trying to shut them down or stop them. Because the Lord will be fighting for them. He will have his angels there. Starts with two. And when it starts with two, it becomes three. Immediately, because the Lord shows up. I believe his word. I believe what he says. Acts 2.42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. <coughs> The whole goal behind that stuff was to encourage each other, was to come together under the common banner of Christ. It's a great thing to be able to do, but the society has twisted fellowship into something else. It's not fellowship if one person is running the whole show. The idea is everybody comes together under the same ideas. Everybody comes together in the same way. There is no pastor. Somebody has a preaching, they get up and preach it. And everybody talks about it. Everybody discusses it. Everybody shares what they they think there is. I we, we got a Bible study started in my last church. And they were like, we, we want to talk about prophecy and some of the other things. And like read the book of Daniel and stuff like that. And they took us as far away from that as they could. Because a lot of churches don't want to talk about that stuff. Because the pastors don't understand prophecy. Most pastors don't understand prophecy because almost no seminaries teach prophecy. And so the people go hungry. It's unfortunate what's happened, but we were foretold all this. And Satan knows if he can keep us from fellowshipping, he weakens us. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's where platforms like this come in. Platforms that basically he created to confuse everybody and to deceive everybody. And our Lord is turning it into something good. 
So let us continue to turn it into something good. Hebrews 10.24, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. We need to be encouraging each other. Love your brethren, love your husband, love your wife, love that person that's hating you. You don't have to put up with what they're doing, but love them. Correct doctrine, as the Bible describes it. Galatians 6.2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. These are scriptures that are skipped over a lot of times. We're to bear each other's burdens. You know what I saw in the church? Including my last one? Some people were willing to bear burdens for others. Most didn't. Most thought it was going and doing things for them. That's not bearing a burden. Bearing a burden, that's if somebody's struggling with sin. They confess it to you. Hey, I'll kneel down and pray with you. That way everybody thinks... No, anybody looking will just see us praying and they won't think it's something going on with you. And you kneel down and pray with them. Lord, forgive me of this sin. Bear that sin with them. Not doing the sin, but bear the confession with them. It's a glorious thing and it's a, a really strong act of love. If someone has something going on that they can't take care of, you encourage them and go and help them with it. If someone is taking care of their elderly parents and they're struggling to do that, then the church goes over and helps. What do you need? You need a house clean? Got it. You know what? We see some other things that need to be done. Here. We're going to take care of that for you. Go and you relax. We'll take care of everything. we got people that are nurses in the church and they'll take care of your parents right now. You go take a sleep. Go take a ride. Go to the Chinese restaurant and pick out the buffet. Just go take a breather. We'll get this. And bear the burden. I never saw that in the church. I did it when I could, but I never saw that in the church. It's unfortunate. Because that's what we're called to do. <coughs> and I'm going to stop the scripture reading at 1 Peter 3, 8. But I'll link these scriptures in the, in the description so you can read more of them. 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. <coughs> Excuse me. Let us not ignore the elephant in the room. Coming together to be there for each other. Giving up some things in our lives. Stopping some things in our lives. To spend time with our true brothers and sisters in the Lord. And helping each other with issues that we need help with. And what do we end up having? having the, the world does everything it can to push it away and to separate it. And what really got me was there's lots of times that we've done this, even on this channel, uh, in there the, you know, back a year over a year ago. And the person that we did it for ended up lashing out and, and hating us for it. And other people showed hatred to us for doing something that the Lord commanded us to do doesn't make sense and I know there's a bunch of you out there who would love some personal interaction fellowship of brothers and sisters coming together to pray for each other but everybody's scared everybody's leery everybody's you know because there's so many enemies out there that want to try to infiltrate and it would take an effort for all the people to come together and say we're going to watch for this and we're going to deal with this the way the Bible tells us to deal with this and when that stuff comes you deal with it you put it out and get rid of it and keep your congregation clean we're here for fellowship we're here for prayer if somebody has a teaching we're here to read scripture and teach we're here to help each other and encourage each other and it doesn't have to be something grand or, or elaborate it doesn't have to be a potluck if somebody wants to bring some they can but that's not what we're there for we're there for each other we're there for the Lord. That's what it was always meant to be. We break bread together, but the focus is him and the scriptures and the truth. And when somebody is, is having an issue, we come together to help them with their issue. That's what the true fellowship is. And it is marvelous in our eyes when it happens. Because true fellowship, the people walk away encouraged, enlightened, answers to their questions. There are people that are still watching my videos that have never commented. 
And they've never commented on other channels too because when they do, they get attacked and they don't want to get attacked. They don't want to give, have that stuff happen all the time. I'm with you. I hate it too. It, you can get pulled into an argument you don't want to get pulled into. And it's near impossible to do it here because sometimes you'll get seven or eight responses from them before you can even get one out. It's not worth it. And it's just to stir up trouble and distract you. Fellowship is one of the key elements. But you know what? If we can't do it personally, we can sure do it here. You guys I, you guys know I try to uh, respond to every comment I get. I try to respond directly. You send me emails, I respond to you on emails. Angel Eyed Girl sends, um, sends me emails all the time. And I'm one of the only people that respond back to her. Because if somebody else responds, I'll see it. I'm one of the only people that responds back to her. Why? It shouldn't be that way. <coughs> if there's a way that we can, even in your own circle, if you can find someone to fellowship with, two of you together are way better than one. I keep my eyes out for people here. Eventually, the Lord will lead me to one. But he has strengthened me, and he continues to strengthen me to be able to operate independently. But I'm, I'm hoping that I can run into somebody and be able to talk scripture with them. It would be awesome. But until that time, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep doing the things the Lord told us to do. And when there is a way, he will announce it. He will reveal it. He will make a way. And if we don't get to here, it's okay, because when we get to heaven, it'll be eternity a fellowship. And that's a fellowship nothing can break. And that will be the best fellowship ever. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. To bless you, to praise you, to honor you, to glorify you. To proclaim your works. And to give thanks for the wonderful blessings you pour out on us every day. Blessings like fellowship. You give us your word and your word proves everything we talk about. You also give us interaction. So that when we meet another believer, the, the, two, the two are strengthened and encouraged and become one greater. And when those two, like your word says, are gathered together, our Lord is with us. You are right there with us, helping us, teaching us, directing us. Unfortunately, in this day and age, as close as we are to the end, and it's obvious we're there, as close as we are to the end, I see a lot of people now getting to the point where they're like, well, maybe we were wrong. You know what? I used to think that too. And I used to question all the time up until probably about six, seven months ago. Did we get something wrong? And I, I would pray, Lord, did we miss something? Did we get something wrong? He kept taking me back to the same scriptures. What do you see? I see all these things then you know I'm like okay I believe it because that was that was what he always asked her do you believe my word yep okay there's nothing else we need to talk about okay I believe it if that's what your word says that I believe it so we go to his word boom it's all right there the Lord you have shown us so many amazing things in fellowship and it's a weird sort of fellowship, but it's a very amazing fellowship in the spirit here on this. You have inspired others through what's going on here on this channel. And they have discovered new things. And they have come around. They have mellowed out or, or ripened on the vine. They have developed and, and come to fruition in their faith. Looking at your word. And you have created a wonderful fellowship in the spirit. So even if we can't have personal fellowship, we still have spiritual fellowship. And if that's all we can get, that's all we can get. So Father, I thank you for that. I thank you that you were able to do this weird connection between all of us. But it's a glorious weird, not a, not a negative weird, it's a positive weird. And we have it, and, and we connect, and we talk, and we communicate through various means. So no matter what the world tries to do, they can't stop us from talking to each other. They can't stop us from interacting with each other because we do it on a level they don't understand. <clears throat> and 
we do it on a level they can't comprehend. And that is our God. They don't comprehend you, so they can't comprehend us. Father, we thank you for this amazing blessing you bestowed upon us. We thank you for this amazing word, for this fellowship of the Holy Spirit that we have. And then we know that when the day comes, it's fast approaching. When the day comes, we will have eternal fellowship in your presence with our Lord and our brethren forever. We will be there with the Holy Spirit will be there. Our Lord will be there. You will be there. Everybody will be there. All the angels will be there. And we will all have fellowship for eternity. Perfect fellowship. And it will be amazing. And it will be glorious. And it will be indescribable. While we are here, Father, I ask that you strengthen us in Jesus' name. Strengthen us and encourage us and keep us moving forward. Equip us with what we need to continue to move forward in your word, in our spiritual development, and in our walk. As we walk towards the end, as we see that light and that finish line right there, and we move towards it, help us continue to move towards it. Help us continue to make, to, to end up the right where we should be. Help us continue to grow and become more faithful and become more established in the word. Help us pray for each other. Help us bless each other in any way that it, we can, any way that is good. And thereby, we're doing those things. We honor you. We glorify you. And praise you and give thanks to you. Just by doing the things you commanded us to do. Father, I ask that you enable us to do that, strengthen us to do that, and prepare us to do that. And for whatever is going to come, whatever good things or bad things, whatever, prepare us for all these things and prepare our hearts for these things. So that when those things come, we are ready. We love you, Father, and we thank you for this incredible time that we can come together on this platform. I know there's a time coming when it's going to stop, but I pray we get to go all the way up to the last second. That will be glorious. And so the gospel will continually be preached. Jesus Christ dying for our sins, paying the debt we owed, and being risen again for our justification. So that we may be saved. So we may have the right to be called the children of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love and for your free salvation. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for Daily Prayer. Fellowship is a wonderful, wonderful thing and it should never be neglected. But can we find people to fellowship with that are true believers like us? That Not that they think like us, but that they are true believers like us. We spend so much time looking for people that think like us, we miss whether they're an actual believer. That's what we should be looking for. Where's the Holy Spirit? I want that individual that has the Holy Spirit because our two Holy Spirits connect. And I tell you that if you go to a church with a hundred or a thousand, you will have no greater fellowship than if just you and one other person come together as brethren and study the Bible. Your fellowship with another not with another 100 or another 1,000. Your fellowship with another can be the sweetest, most perfect fellowship there is. Because when the two of you get together, Jesus Christ is there. His word said it. I'm going to post these in the description. You can go back and read it for yourself. His word said it. I believe it. I believe his word. I believe his word, and I'll believe it to the end. If I, if I do anything right, it's believing his word. I may not perform it properly every single time, but I believe his word. And that's what it says. That's what's happening. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.